Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. And as you know, we are discussing uh, God Vortex today. And uh, in the God Vortex, the law has been introduced. We'll try to take the overview of the law. We'll try to discuss the key provisions of the law. We'll try to understand what the business needs to do and what will do, what are they going to do, what will be the way forward for them. We'll try to cover all these aspects. So let's start our lecture. So So this is the timeline. We all know this that the announcement was made on 31st Jan 2022. The public consultation document was introduced on April 28th and 2022. Then UE corporate law has been introduced on 9th of December 2022. The law will be effective on or after 1st of June 2023. This is a, we have tried to cover the key structure of the law. If we are looking into this, this is the all do the total 70 provisions in the law. And if we are trying to structure it, they will say this is a persons, these persons can be exempt persons or these persons can be out of the scope person or these persons can be taxable persons. These Exempt person, Article 4 to 10, it has been covered in the exempt persons, out of the scope person that has not been specifically mentioned. Then taxable persons, there's a taxable person can be resident taxable persons or it can be non-resident taxable persons. It can be in the free zone, it can be out of the free zone, it can be qualifying free zones person, it can be non-qualifying free zones person. So might be the we are going to implement this corporate tax on the single taxable person or we are going to implement on tax group. So tax group article 40 and 41 cover the tax group. Now once we are applying this corporate tax, we are applying corporate tax might be on the single entity, might be we are applying on the tax group, but the provision to compute the taxable income are almost same, except one article of the law which is Article 42 that deals specifically for the computation of taxable income of the tax group. Otherwise, all provisions like general provisions of the taxable income, Article 20, exempt income, this article and deduction, Article 28 to 23, the same provisions are applicable in case we are doing this for the tax group, taxable income computation. The once we have computed this taxable income, might be their chances, might be there is a tax loss, might be there is a taxable income. In case this is a tax loss, the article 37 to 39 cover the tax losses. And in case of taxable income, then we need to calculate the tax and article 40 to 47, 44 to 47 covers this. We need to do the corporate tax return need to calculate the payments and refund at then there's some administrative provisions of the law as well. So some other provisions that has not been specifically I have covered in the structure, these are the definition or other provisions I have mentioned here, like record given provision, change of tax period, violation, penalty, transitional rules. So in total, 70 provisions of the laws are there. We have tried to structure it like this. So what are the tax rates applicable in the law? The tax rates are qualifying free zones persons. We we'll look into the definition of qualifying free zones person. Qualifying free zones person tax rates are zero percent on the qualifying income and nine percent on the non-qualifying income of the qualifying free zone person. Other than qualifying free zones person, there are general like it can be the persons on the mainland, taxable persons on the mainland might be non-qualifying free zone person, might be permanent establishment of the non-resident person. Then the tax rate applicable on these persons are zero percent on the taxable income up up to three hundred and seventy-five thousand, and more than if the taxable income is more than three hundred and seventy-five thousand, the tax rate is nine percent. This is a slide discovers tax level person and their taxability along with this resident and non-resident person. This is the code. I will say this is a very, very important slide in the presentation. 
So the person, as we discussed earlier, it can be persons, can be exempt person. We'll look into this. What is the detail of the exempt person? It can be out of the scope person or it can be taxable persons. Taxable person can further be classified into two categories. These are the resident taxable persons. These are the non-resident taxable person. When I'm asking resident taxable person, it doesn't mean where the people are the business are living. This is resident status from the tax point of view. So the resident states are the taxable person can be resident taxable person or it can be non-resident taxable person. Law says juridical person, who are the juridical person? Juridical persons are LLC, limited liability company. This is the juridical person. Public shareholding company, this is the juridical person. A public joint stock company or some sort of trust or foundation that these are the juridical persons. So if the juridical persons are within the UAE, these are being controlled anywhere across the world. Suppose we have one company in UAE in the free zone, one company either on the mainland, but this is a juridical LLC company. It doesn't matter from where this company is being controlled or managed. If the company, if the juridical person is within the UAE, then in this situation, it will be considered resident and the worldwide income of this juridical person will be subject to tax in UAE. Now, this juridical person might be this company is out of UAE. In case the company is out of UAE, then we need to look into this. This company is being managed and controlled from the UAE. If this company is being managed and controlled from the UAE, then it will be considered resident and worldwide income of this company will be subject to tax as well in UAE. Suppose we have one company in Europe, but the decision making is being happened in UAE. So European company will be subject to tax in UAE. Third category is a natural person. The law says the natural person is sole establishment or civil company will fall under the definition of natural person. If this natural person is doing any business, then any income related to this business will be subject to tax in UAE. It doesn't matter this business is earning income from UAE. It doesn't matter this business is in earning income out of UAE. But any income related to this business will be subject to tax in UAE. Furthermore, any other person determined in the decision, we need to wait for the decision. So it will be considered resident as well. I think we are clear what are the resident persons. Now we're coming back to the non-resident person. Non-resident taxable person, keep in mind, this is not only non-resident, these are the non-resident taxable persons. So non-resident taxable person might be permanent establishment of the non-resident person in UAE. If this is a permanent establishment of the non-resident person in UAE, it will be considered non-resident taxable person. And if this person, any person who is non-resident in person derives any income from UAE, and UAE source income will be subject to tax in UAE and person will be considered non-resident taxable person. In the same way, if the non-resident person and any sort of nexus with anyone over here, with any business over here in the UAE, and the person is earning any source income, UAE source income, then this person will be considered non-resident taxable person as well. So I think this covered the comprehensive thing, which person will be subject to tax, which person will not be subject to tax. If some any person is out of UAE, they don't have any presence here, they don't have any PE here, they don't, they are not earning any income from the UE source, they are not earning any UE sourced income, then it will be considered out of the scope of UE wet law. Otherwise, we have discussed every company will be subject to tax, individual earning business will be subject to tax, branches of a foreign company here, because it will be considered PE, it will be subject to tax. In the same way, person setting out of UE, earning any UE sourced income, it will be subject to tax. Exempt person, we'll discuss the three different types of person. It can be exempt person, it can be out of the scope person, it can be taxable person. We have already discussed the taxable person in detail. Now, these are the exempt person. These exempt person, government entity of you, any government entity of UAE, if the government entity is not doing any business, this entity will be exempt entity. If the entity is doing any business, then we need to look into this, how much amount they are earning from the business, how much amount they are earning from the government 
basically what are the objective of the entity, then we need to apportion the taxes, we need to apportion the expenditure, we need to apportion the income, we need, and all interrelated for all the transaction between the business and this government entity will be treated as a related party transaction it has been given in the law. Any government controlled entity, it will be exempt as well. But if the government controlled entity is doing any business, then it the business will be considered separate and the main objective for which this company has been established, it will be considered a separate person engaged in the extraction of natural resources, extraction of resources. If there are some certain conditions like the person has a license of the extraction of resources, and this is subject to tax at the MRS level, if some conditions are being fulfilled, these conditions are being fulfilled, that it will be assumed this person is out of the, this person is exempt as well. In the same way, person engaged in the non-extraction and natural resources, almost same conditions are there, this person will be exempt from the UE corporate tax as well. Qualifying public benefit entity, if the entity is doing for the welfare of the welfare and the assets of this entity are not being used other than the furtherance of the objective of this business and company is not doing this qualifying benefit entity is not doing any business specifically and not paying any money to the related people, then it will be considered qualifying public entity. Qualifying investment fund will be exempt as well. Certain conditions are there that these qualifying funds are under the competent surveillance, respective authority surveillance. Along with this, these funds are listed on the registered stock exchange and they have not applied to the after. So these are the conditions that this will be subject, it will be exempt as well. Public private pension fund will be exempt as well. Any juridical person incorporated in the UE and wholly owned and controlled by the exempt person, it will be exempt as well. Any other person that may be determined in the cabinet, it will be exempt. We'll discuss in our coming lecture, we'll discuss each exempt person, what are the related conditions of exempt person, and we'll discuss all in our coming lectures in the future lecture in detail. So we are discussed again and again if this is a non-resident person and this non-resident person have a UE sourced income, then the income of that non-resident person will be subject to tax in UE. So this is the definition of UE sourced income. Law says UE sourced income where it is derived from any of these three options, any of these three. If this income is being derived from the UE resident person, if this income is being derived from the PE of the non-resident person, or if this income is derived due to the, some activities in the UE, like activities performed, asset located, capital invested, these all different types of activities are there. If this income is being earned from any of these three sources from UE, this income will be considered UE sourced income. It will be subject to tax. And what will be the tax rate, we'll discuss in detail in our next slides. Examples of this UE sourced income, like goods are being sold in the UE, this will be called UE sourced income. Provision of services within the UE will fall under the UE sourced income. Contracts performed and benefited in the UE, movable and immovable property, income from the movable and immovable property, disposal of shares, interest, income subject to certain conditions, and insurance and reinsurance premium subject to certain conditions. All these are the examples of UE sourced income. Permanent establishment. We have discussed if the non-resident person, if the non-resident person has a PE in UAE, it will be taxable in UAE. So now the question arises, what is PE? What is the permanent establishment? In the law, it has been given any fixed or permanent place of business in the UAE, it will fall under the definition of permanent establishment. Like if the company has a branch, company has office, company has factory, Company management is based there, decision is being taken here. Company has some sort of infrastructure which will carry more than six months. All these are the different types and different examples, like the company has real company has offices here. So these are the different types of examples which reflect this is the, if these are the permanent or fixed establishment in UAE, then it will be considered permanent establishment of the non-resident person, and the income of this PE will be subject to tax in UAE. Then the person has the 
habitually exercises the authority to conclude and negotiate the contract. If someone is here, here in UAE, and this person is acting on behalf of non-resident, acting on behalf of non-resident person, and person is negotiating the contract, concluding the contract, specifically working for the non-resident person, then it will be assumed that this is the PE of the non-resident person. Any other form of nexus due to the non-resident person is generating any income from this mark and it will be defined in the cabinet decision. So it will be considered PE as well. So, but there are some exceptions of this PE. Suppose if this one entity is providing storing, displaying, delivering of the goods activities in UAE are keeping the stock on behalf of the non-resident person that needs to be delivered to someone else are purchasing goods and merchandise are conducting any other type of activity, sporting activity for the non-resident person, or mere presence of the natural person in the UAE who doesn't have any full authority to act on behalf of non-resident person, or who is not exclusively working for the non-resident person, then they say these are the exceptions, and due to these things, the non-resident person will not be considered a that the person has a permanent establishment in the UAE. The partnerships, we discuss the partnership. The partnership may be, this is a local partnership, might be this is a foreign partnership. If this is a local partnership, there possibility the partnership is an unincorporated partnership or this is an incorporated partnership. If this is an unincorporated partnership, then law says then no juridical person. If the partnership is an unincorporated partnership in the UE, it will be considered a transparent and it will not be a juridical person. So partnership itself will not be subject to corporate tax. The income of the partnership will be subject to tax in the hands of the partner. The partner will be liable to register for, for tax purposes and they will be registered. They will be required to submit the return. They will be required to respect all the provisions of the law. But if this partnership is the incorporated partnership, then it will be considered a juridical person. Uh, we have already discussed the definition of juridical person. So none of the partners will have unlimited liability and this is a juridical person. Partnership is an incorporated partnership. It will be considered like a company and the partnership itself will be subject to tax. But in case of foreign partnership, law sales shall be treated like in unincorporated partnership subject to two conditions. These two conditions are that the foreign partnership are not subject to tax and each partner in the foreign partnership is individually subject to tax. So if these two conditions are being fulfilled, then the foreign partnership will be treated as unincorporated partnership. It has been given in the law, the partners in an unincorporated partnership can apply to the FTA to be treated as a taxable person. This option has been given to the partner. In case they are applying an un 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 unincorporated partnership is being transferred as a incorporated partnership either a taxable person, then the partnership will be responsible to submit the return. The partnership will be responsible to claim the expenses. It will be considered a separate juridical person. Family foundation. Generally, family foundations and trusts, these are separate legal entities. They are separate personality, separate legal entity, different from the owner, different from the shareholders. And this is the reason that this family foundations are subject to tax. But an option has been given to the member that, that they can apply and as an unincorporated partnership subject to the following. And in case this being applied as an unincorporated partnership, then FT was established, then the, the family foundation was, these are the condition if they can apply, but these are subject condition due to which they can apply as an unincorporated partner, in partnership. What is the family foundation basically? We see the family foundation was established for the benefit of the identified or unidentified, identified natural person or benefit of the public. Principal activity is receive, hold, disburse the funds associated with the saving and investment account. Family foundation doesn't conduct any business. The main purpose is not to avoid the tax. Any other condition mentioned by the minister, these are the few conditions. If these conditions are being fulfilled, then the family foundation can apply to the authority and declare itself as an unincorporated partnership. 
if this is being declared as unincorporated partnership, then income will be subject to tax in the hands of the shareholders, not the partnership it itself will be subject to corporate tax. Free zones, hot topic, very hot topic free zone. Certain conditions we have already discussed the income of the qualifying income of the qualifying free zone person will be subject to 0% tax. Now the two things, what is the qualifying free zone person? First thing, second thing, what is the qualifying income? Qualifying income, it will be defined by the minister in the respective decision. What are the qualifying free zones person? There are four conditions for this. If these four conditions are being fulfilled, then we will say this person is a qualifying free zones person. And these conditions are maintains adequate substance in the UA. This is the first condition. Second, derives qualifying income. We need to wait for the definition or detail of the qualifying income. Third, not elected to be subject to corporate tax because the person in the free zone, qualifying free zone person, they have an option to elect and request the authority to get themselves registered for corporate tax purposes, but they have not after this option. And fourth one is comply with the transfer pricing rules and documentation. If these four conditions are being fulfilled, then we can say the person will be considered a qualifying free zones person. All free zones person will be required to register and submit the corporate tax return. And corporate tax treatment will be same for all free zones person. It doesn't matter in which free zone you are. Now, I think till our discussion, till now with our discussion, we understood what are the, what are basically a resident person, what are the non-resident persons, what are the persons out of the scope, what are the persons which are exempt. Along with this, we have, we have learned the definition of family foundation. We have learned the definition and scope of the partnerships. We learn what will be the impact of corporate tax and the free foods. Now, we have basically on overall basis we assess the scope of the corporate tax on which person it will be applicable and which persons it will not be applicable now we are moving to the next stage this is computation of personal computations of the taxable income these are the general provision as we discussed earlier this accounting profit taken from the statement of financial statement will be considered the basis for the will be considered the basis for the to calculate the taxable income so based upon the accounting profit business will be required to convert the accounting profit into the taxable profit accounting profit will be prepared based upon the applicable accounting standard and we know this ifrs applicable in ue so accounting profit will be prepared based upon the applicable accounting standard ifrs these profits will be converted into the taxable profit. The rules for to prepare the financial statements are different and the rules to prepare this taxable income are different. The different rules for this, different rules for this side. We need to make some sort of adjustment. These adjustments will be then based upon these adjustments will convert our, will convert our accounting profit into the taxable profit. Ultimately tax will be applicable on the taxable profits. So what are type of adjustment? Key types of adjustments are unrealized gain and loss. Usually tax authorities follow hybrid approach on realization basis and accounting IFRS follow accrual basis. So unrealized gain and loss will be adjusted. Exempt income, it will not be subject. It will be removed, but it will be reflecting in your financials. In the same way, intra-group transaction, you will look into this. What is the treatment of intra-group transaction? Intra-group transaction will be eliminated. Relief under the corporate law, different types of reliefs are available. It will be adjusted. Tax loss relief will be adjusted. Non-deductible expense and non-allowable non expenditure will be removed. In the same way, transaction with related parties and connected persons, we need to look into this. At this, at the arm length price or not, it will be adjusted. Any other expenditure that has not been considered to arrive at the taxable profit, it will be adjusted. Based upon this, my accounting profit will be converted into my taxable profits. Small businesses, law says, minister will define the threshold. If the taxable income of the any small business is below threshold, then it will be assumed that the business doesn't have any taxable income. And in case the business doesn't have any taxable income, 
then all related provisions like relief, reduction, tax loss, transfer pricing, documentation, all these provisions will not be applicable on the small business. But what is the threshold for the small business? We need to wait and we need to wait for the cabinet decision. We need to wait for further clarification from the respective authorities. Then we'll be able to decide. Exempt income. Initially, we we'll discuss exempt persons. Exempt person, now taxable person. Taxable person has exempt income. Now we are under the bracket of taxable person. This taxable person has exempt income. So these are the different types of incomes of the taxable person which are exempt from corporate tax. The first is dividend and other profit distribution. <coughs> Sorry. Dividend and profit distribution will not be subject to tax. It will be considered exempt income. Dividend and other profit received from the participating interest. Participating interest key, key definition is if the entity has investment out of UAE, which is minimum 5%, and this investment is for at least for a period of 12 months, and the tax rate applicable out of UAE is at least 9%, if these three minimum conditions are being fulfilled, then we will say the dividend, any profit distribution received by the local person out of UAE, it will be considered exempt income. Any other income related to the participation interest, we have discussed here the participation interest. So any other income from non-resident person, operating aircraft, ships, like any third party, third any any any, any other country out of UAE whose ships are ships or aircraft are coming in the UAE, so it will not be subject to corporate tax subject to the conditions, the same privilege is available to the carriers of UE as well in other countries. Income of the foreign permanent establishment, if the UE company has any foreign PE, if the, if the UE company has any PE out of UE in any other country and minimum tax rate there is 9%, then it will be exempt as well. Transfer within the qualifying group. We'll discuss the definition of qualifying group. This is the transfer within the qualifying group. No gain or loss in this for transfer of liability. Basically, whenever there is a transfer in between the group entities, then no gain or loss will be arrived. As such, liabilities will be transferred at the book value. Once it will be transferred at the book value, it will be from one from the books of one entity, it will be removed at the book value. And in the books of other entity, it will be booked at the book value. There will not be any gain, there will not be any loss on this. So this is the transfer, but this transfer, it will be booked at the book when you have certain conditions. And these conditions are to become a member of the same qualifying group. Member must be a juridical resident person. We have already discussed the definition of juridical radical resident person. Or it can be non-resident P in the UE as well. Suppose Boston Robin is here. Boston Robin has around, you can say, more than 500 branches assuming in the UAE and this, they can go for one group and qualifying group as well. Our mother might be the other the PE, different PE as well and conditions are being satisfied, then they can go for PE in the UAE. Either a taxable person or a third party owns at least 75% shareholding. Persons are not exempt. Persons are not qualifying free zones person. We have already discussed what are the exempt person. We have already discussed what are the qualifying free zones person. Financial year ends on the same date. And these persons are preparing the financial statement on the same standards. If all these conditions are being fulfilled, we can say these are the qualifying group. And in case of transfer of assets, transfer of liabilities in between the group entities, it will not be subject to any gain or loss. It will be adjusted at the book value. At the book value, it will be removed from the one entity. And in the book value, it will be booked in the other entity. Business restructuring. Business restructuring is if one taxable person is transferring its entire business to another taxable person and getting interest in the form of shares in the, in the respective business, then law says this transfer will be not be subject to corporate tax. It will be considered a going concern basis transfer. In the same way, if the entire business is being transferred to another taxable person, and the existing taxable person ceases to exist, still it will be considered transfer as a going concern and it will not be subject to corporate tax. But there are some conditions for this transfer as well. And these conditions are same that we have discussed in our previous slide, like same juridical resident person, having a resident or P of the non-resident person in the UE, 
75% at least shareholding persons are not exempt, not qualifying fees person, same financial year. And the last condition is they are preparing the financial statements on the same accounting standard. These are the minimum requirements. So it will not be subject to corporate tax as well. Again, they will be booking basically at the book value, assets and liability, all these things it will be adjusted at the book value or the carrying amount. Tax losses. We discussed in the first slide that whenever we are calculating the taxable income, there is a possibility the business is making tax law, there is a possibility the business is making taxable income or taxable profit. If the tax losses are there, law given this privilege to the businesses as a taxable person, they can carry forward their tax losses for unlimited time. And they can adjust their tax losses 75% of their taxable income. So businesses can carry forward the tax losses for unlimited time and they can adjust tax losses each year 75% of their taxable income. But this is subject to some conditions as well. Like the, this, the, some losses are disqualified losses. Like if the losses exist before the introduction of the corporate tax law, it will be considered a disqualified losses or if the losses exist before the registration of the taxable person, it will be considered unqualified losses and businesses will not be able to carry forward their losses. So these are the unqualified losses. Other than these, they will be qualified losses. It can be carried forward for unlimited time and each year they will be able to adjust 75% of the taxable income of the respective tax period. But there are some limitation to avail this benefit as well. There are two limitations. One is the continuity of the ownership. There's a tax loss that can be carried forward or utilized provided the same person continuously owns at least 50% ownership in the taxable period. The basic, basically the period in which tax losses have arisen and the period in which tax losses have been adjusted. In between these two tax periods, same person is carrying at least 50% ownership of the shareholding. If the person is getting 50% shareholding between these two tax periods, then we can say that this is the continuity of the ownership. If this condition is being fulfilled, you can adjust 75% of their taxable losses. Second condition is continuity of business. Might be there's a change in the ownership and the ownership has changed. There's more than 50% change in the ownership. If the ownership has been changed, then in this situation, we need to look into it. the person is carrying the same business, the, the new person the, to whom the transferring, the, to whom the business has been transferred, that person is carrying the same business or that person is carrying a different business. If the person is carrying the same business, then still they will be adjust 75% of their losses for the unlimited period of time each year. So this is for the continuity of the business. They say, the person continue to conduct the same or similar business following a change in ownership of more than 50%, then it will be considered that the person, there is a continuity of the business as well. This limitation doesn't apply whose shares are listed on the recognized stock exchange. So for the losses, we can say, if one entity is making loss, this is part of this entity can carry forward its losses for unlimited period of time. This losses can be taken by the, in the group, basically if the entities are part of the group, there's some condition there. If entities are part of the group, as a group can take, group can take 75% on overall losses for unlimited period of time, then there is a, in the law, there is the option one taxable person can adjust their losses against another taxable person. This provision is given in the law as well. The company A, a company B, company A, there are some sort of losses. The company B profits. The losses of a company A can be adjusted against the profits of company B, but this is also subject to some conditions. And these conditions are, both persons are resident juridical persons. Second, ownership at least 75%. Third, same accounting standards are being applied. Fourth, exempt. This is not an exempt person. This is not a qualified free zone person. The financial year ends on the same date of both of the entities. Basically, the entity whose losses are being transferred to other entity, one entity is making losses, one entity is making profit. Losses of one are being adjusted against the other. If this is being happened, then these are the conditions. If these conditions are minimum conditions, if these conditions are being fulfilled, then loss of one entity can be adjusted against the profits of other entity. The last one is common ownership must exist at least in which the loss incurred 
and the period in which loss has been adjusted. Common ownership, or we can they 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 not given the option of continuity of business. They are asking common ownership. So one person can adjust his losses against the other person. Deductible expenses. While calculating taxable profits, tax person can deduct some expenses. These are the deductible. Loss is any expense that related to the business 100% can be deducted. It will be allowed for tax purposes. But they have put some sort of ceiling. Some expenses are allowed up to certain limit, like the interest. If a business, if a group has certain interest, sorry, loan, if this loan and this loan interest is there, they say in case of interest, interest will be allowed 30% of earning before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. So each year, 30% of earning before interest, tax and depreciation will be allowed for interest only. Any interest beyond this limit, it will even not be allowed in the books to calculate the taxable profits. And while calculating this earning, exempt income will not be considered in this earning. Moreover, they said, if one related, if the person is taking loan from other related by two related party, he is taking loan from one related party, given money to other related party. This money to given being given to other related party for acquisition, redemption, or financing purposes. Law says this financing is an exempt. So basically, whatever the loan is being taken from related party, being given to other party, and just to finance the exempt business, something like in this situation. Whatever the loan you are taking, interest, this interest will not be allowed and it will not be considered tax allowable expenses. In case there are some common expenses, it will be a portion. These are the non-allowable expenses. <clears throat> Entertainment expenses will be allowed up to 50% only. It will not be allowed more than 50%. So 50% entertainment expenses are allowed, 50% are not allowed in case you are shareholder, in case you are investor, in case your customers are traveling, you are giving them food, meal, entertainment, accommodation, any some another entertainment in this situation, you can claim up to maximum up to 50%. You cannot claim anything more than 50%. Losses not related to the business are not allowed. Basically, we know this one business loss can be adjusted against other business law. If the following condition, what the previous condition, whatever we have discussed, if these are being fulfilled, then the losses can be adjusted. Otherwise, losses cannot be adjusted. Related party exempt income. Anything, sorry, anything related to the exempt income is exempt. So expenses will be not be allowed. This is apple to apple comparison. Income is not subject to tax. Expenses will not be allowed for tax purposes. So non-business expenditure, it will not be allowed to calculate a taxable profit, donations, grants, and gift, unless these are being given to the qualifying qualifying, uh, qualifying body, there's certain condition for this that we already discussed. Unless these donation grants or gift are being to that body, this will not be allowed. If these are being the registered qualifying body, then it will be allowed. Fines and penalty will not be allowed to arrive at the taxable profits. Any type of bribes or illicit payments, it will not be allowed to arrive at the taxable profits. Dividend, profit distribution, anything paid to the owner, it will not be allowed for tax purposes. Any amount withdrawn, if the national person is doing any business and any amount withdrawn by the national person, it will not be allowed for tax purposes. Suppose one person is running a sole establishment and person is taking salary, a person is taking dividend, person is taking any drawings, all these things will not be allowed to arrive at the taxable profits. Corporate tax imposed, it will not be allowed. Recoverable input tax will not be allowed, but the blocked input taxes, input tax, it will be allowed to arrive at the taxable profits. Tax imposed out of the UAE, it will not be allowed. So these are the tax group businesses can go for tax grouping as well in case the business are going for the tax grouping. So these are the conditions. Resident person can make tax group subject to the following condition. So the, these are the resident person. All the persons are juridical person. Parent company owns at least 95% shares, voting rights and profits, entitlement of the profits and net assets at least 95%. All these three, like the company has Shares, the company has voting rights, the parent company has 
entitlement for the profits and net asset at least 95%. All these three conditions required to be fulfilled. None of them is exempt or qualifying for each one person. Same financial year, same accounting standard. If all these conditions are being fulfilled, then the company can go for tax grouping. Once the companies are going for tax grouping, all intercompany transaction will not be subject to tax and the group will have a one tax registration number it will be considered one single entity and all other provisions of the law will be applicable as it is whatever i allowed what is this allowed all these will be applicable all it is so change, in case any changes in the group it will be effective from the beginning of the respective tax year the parent shall consolidate the result and eliminate the intergroup transaction. We have just discussed intergroup transaction will not be subject to corporate tax. The group will be considered a single taxable person. These are the transaction with the related parties and transaction with the connected person. As per the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, they've introduced transfer pricing guidelines. And based upon this transfer pricing guideline, they're asking if you have any transaction with the related party, if the entity has any transaction with the connected person, this should be at arm length. Like in case you are selling anything in the market, whatever you are, the price that you are charging to the third party, it's the same price you need to charge to the related party at the same price you need to charge it to your connected person as well. So what is the related party? Related party can be established based upon the individual or based upon the entity as well. If, if the individual or its connected person is holding more than 50% right, or any entity or its related entities are holding more than 50% hearing rights or control in any other person, so it will be considered the entity is a related party. In the same way, connected person Connected persons are the owners, officers, directors, or related parties of these connectors. Owner, officers, or director, these will be called connected person. This is, I'm telling at the very, very high level, but there is in detail what is the definition of related party, what is the definition of connected person. So and at the high level, if one entity is holding 50% of other entity, or owner is holding 50% of other entity, or entity is holding directly or indirectly 50% of other entity, it will be considered related party. Officer, Director, owner, or related party of officer, director, and owner, it will be considered related, it will be connected person. So if anything is being transferred to the connected person, or if anything is being transferred to the related party, it will be subject to tax at the arm length price. So it cannot, you cannot transfer, buy the goods and sell to another party at cost, buy the goods or services, you can give services free of cost to other party. If one party you are charging, Assuming 10, other party you are charging 0, one party you are charging 100, related party you are charging 50, all these things is over now. So every transaction, law says it should be at arm length. So how will you calculate the arm length? This is the arm length price, there are different methods to calculate the arm length price. These are the different methods as given in the OECD guidelines. Law says recommended approaches, you need to use OECD methods methods given in the OECD guidelines. If you are not using these methods, if you are applying any other method, it must, you must justify what is the reason that you are applying this method. So OECD transfer pricing methods, it can be classified into two categories. One is traditional transactions method. These are the preferred method as per the OECD guidelines. Second are the transactional profit method. These are the alternative method as per the OECD guidelines. There are three methods which are traditional transaction method. First one is comparable uncontrolled price method. Second is resale price method. Third one is cost plus method. Comparable uncontrolled price is very simple. At what price you are selling goods to third party, you need to charge the same price to your related party and connected person as well. This is a very simple method. Next one is the resale price method. You are buying and selling. Whatever is the sale price, we need to calculate the markup as per the market and do need to do the reverse working to arrive at the arm length price. Anyway, these are the five different methods. Again, you can go through my articles as well that I've already written in the Halesh time. In detail, I already written in the transfer pricing. Or we will have again, we will have a lecture in the future on these all methods. We'll discuss all these all one by one. So how to calculate the arm length price these are the methods that will be helpful to establish the arm line price. 
Withholding tax. Withholding tax is applicable in UE as well, by the way, but this is at zero percent. So law says zero percent withholding tax on UE sourced income, and this will be paid to the non-resident person. If non-resident person based out of UE, a person is giving any type of services from there to a party which is in UE. So local party, whenever this local party will transfer the money to the person, non-resident person, a person who is out of UE, this person will hold withholding tax, and for the time being. Rate is zero percent. So zero percent withholding tax will be applicable in case of non-resident person, which is not attributable. The important thing is the income of that non-resident person is not attributable to the PE because if it will be attributable to the PE, it will be subject to tax in UAE. Zero percent, nine percent, or might be to be the qualifying reason person and person is earning any qualifying income as well. So withholding tax rate zero percent in case of payment to a non-resident person. Withholding tax shall be applied on the gross amount. The maximum amount of withholding tax credit is up to the corporate tax payable. This is the important thing. So if assuming, we'll discuss how we'll settle this. So if assuming corporate tax payable before deduction withholding tax is hundred, withholding tax is one hundred twenty. Assuming so maximum withholding tax will be allowed hundred. And whatever the 20 extra, they said it will be refunded back to the taxable person. A taxable person has a right to ask this refund from the federal tax authority. Foreign tax credit, these are the foreign tax credit. If local resident person, if the resident person is earning any income out of UAE, definitely tax will be applicable in the respective country. So they are asking. We have already discussed the resident for the resident, the income worldwide income is subject to tax. If there's the one company here, they have some sort of income from UK, UK tax is applicable. So this income taxable here as well, loss is this is already being taxed in UK as well. To, to avoid the double taxation, the business is given to foreign tax creditors. So how it will work basically, they will calculate the tax, assuming tax, whatever the amount of tax out of this tax, they will again give relief. This is the foreign tax credit FTC. FTC will be adjusted and the net amount will be payable to the government. So the important thing is whenever this tax is being calculated, in this calculation of tax, foreign income is included. Foreign income is included in this calculation of tax. Then when we are taking the foreign tax credit as well. But the important thing is this foreign tax credit, they said, cannot exceed the UEC due to the relevant foreign income. If 9% tax is applicable in UAE and out of UAE, assuming in UK, 19% tax is applicable. So maximum 9% will be allowed as a foreign tax credit. It will not be allowed. Suppose income is 100 into 9% in UK, they have paid 19. So once this income will be included here in UAE, so 100 into 9, 9 only nine will be allowed, remaining 10 will not be allowed. So the remaining 10 will not be allowed. They say the FTC cannot exceed the UECT due to the relevant foreign income. Any unutilized FTC foreign tax credit cannot be carried forward or it cannot be carried back. Other key provisions of the law. These are the other key provisions of the law. Like what is the currency applicable? Currency. Currency said everything should be in UAE dirham. In case the transactions are not in dirham, then it needs to be converted into dirham at the applicable exchange rate of UAE central bank. Settlement of city. So whenever this corporate tax is being calculated, whatever the amount of corporate tax out of this amount, first of all, withholding tax will be adjusted. Then foreign tax credit will be adjusted. Then any relief will be adjusted that we have already discussed in detail. Whatever the remaining amount, this amount will be paid to the federal tax authority. The withholding tax will be adjusted first. FTC will be adjusted second. And third thing, any other tax or any other relief, it will be adjusted. Return and payment. Return needs to be submitted and payment needs to be made within nine months from the end of the relevant tax period. So if the companies have their financial year starting on or after 
If the companies have their financial year starting from 1st of July 2023, their tax period 12 months will be ended by the end of June 30th, 2024. They have further nine months. They will be liable to submit the return. They will be liable to make the payment maximum by 31st March 2025. And in case your financial year is starting from the 1st of Jan 2024, then law is applicable on the financial year starting on or after 1st June 2024. So if your financial year is starting from 1st of Jan 2024, your tax period will be ended by 31st December 2024 and you will be liable to submit the return. You will be liable to make the payment maximum by 30th September 2025. A refund, you can apply for a refund. A refund, you can apply. There are two chances. If you have overpaid of tax or you have paid withholding tax, you can take a refund from the FTA. Registration, every business, there is no registration threshold. Every taxable person is liable to register for corporate tax. There is no threshold for this. Even you have a zero income, even you have an income more than 100 million, 2 million, 10 million, 50, 30 million, it doesn't matter. If you have a taxable person based upon the definition that we will discuss in the very beginning, if you are a resident or non-resident taxable person, you are liable to register for corporate tax purposes. Auditor financial statement are not required for the time being, but it has been given in the law that the minister can issue notification at any time in the future. If required, minister can ask the taxable person to prepare and present the audited financial statements. Record keeping, business are required to keep the record minimum for a period of seven years from the end of the relevant tax period. Even the exempt businesses, they are liable to keep the record to justify their claim to the respective authority. Tax period, the tax period will be of 12 months. It will be assumed the tax period starting from 1st of Jan 2000, 1st of Jan till 31st of December, unless and until you have a specific tax period, then it will be assumed your tax period will be started from 1st of Jan till 31st December. But if you have a specific tax period, that will be applicable. NK abuse rules has been introduced that if the business are doing any, any arrangement, any planning, which shows that the objective is to avoid the tax. So it will not be accepted. But if you can justify to the authority that the reason, that the commercial reason behind this, then it will be, might be, it will be allowed by the authority. Transitional provisions are there. Transitional provision, this is very interesting. Your transitional provision, whatever they are asking before, just at the beginning of the financial year, whatever are your closing balance, or but just before the beginning of the financial year, it will become your opening balance for the tax period. But the important thing is it has been given in the law that these open panels needs to be converted by considering the transfer pricing principles. So if you are preparing the financials, these financials you are not dealing, you have any transaction which is not at arm length, then whatever is reflecting in your financial statement, it needs to be adjusted to bring the financial statement up to the market value. So these are the key provisions. How can we help? This is uh, uh, how we are facilitating businesses, basically. Understanding the current structure. Whatever we are doing right now, we have the expertise. We can understand the current structure of the business based upon this all provisions of the law. We can advise the business what should be the best suitable structure for you by keeping yourself within the provisions of the law to minimize the impact of corporate tax. So what we'll do, we'll understand the existing requirement, we'll understand the existing structure. And based upon this, we'll advise you the best structure to optimize the tax. So we'll cover this under the impact assessment. And once, usually once we are covering this under the impact assessment, we are presenting this impact assessment report. We'll present this impact assessment report to the business, to the management. After approval of the management, we'll go ahead and we'll implement these impact assessment report. And after the implementation, we'll go through your ERP system. It will be part of the implementation. We'll assess the gap in the working capital because the businesses are liable to pay corporate tax. It will impact on the working capital. So one thing will impact on the working capital. We'll try to identify what will be the impact. 
So on in the impact assessment, we'll cover each and every area of the business where this corporate tax will have an impact. And then what will be the impact and what will the impact on the working capital? What will the impact on the business? After assessing the work impact on the working capital, we'll go ahead and implementation after the implementation. We will keep supporting you on a going basis as well. So this is over from my side. If you have any question, I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. And in case you have any question, you can drop an email at faiza.hashmi at chriscooper.com. You can give us a call as well. Faiza, she's our director. She was working with Shell UAE. She was working with Shell Pakistan. She was working with PwC Pakistan. She was working with PwC UE as well. She has a core expertise in direct tax. In case you have any question, you can give us a call. You can drop us email. It will be player supporting you. So okay, wonderful session. Please share your slide and recording. Can I have the recorded session? You can find all these recorded sessions. This is being live right now on the LinkedIn, this is live on the YouTube, this is live on the Facebook as well. You can follow our LinkedIn pages, you can follow our Facebook page, you can follow our uh, YouTube page, you will find the complete lecture there. Anybody speaking? Okay. Uh, Share this, Shah. What is the impact on equity according to IFRS as per IFRS and equity fund? We are recording a share of profit and loss from associate joint venture in our income statement accordingly. Adjust the carrying value of the investment by corresponding amount, and we get the distribution dividend from the associate carrying value of the investment is declared. The basically, you are getting dividend. We already discussed the treatment of dividend. In case you are getting dividend from the local, it will not be subject to tax. If you are getting dividend out of UAE, it will be subject to foreign tax credit. In case this is subject to foreign tax credit, and this is a participation clause we have discussed in detail. If you are holding minimum 5% at least for a period of 12 months, and wet rate, uh, sorry, and the tax rate applicable out of UAE is at least 9%, then this will not be subject to tax. We will discuss already in detail. The DFC entity are tax free for 50 years as well. Yes, these are basically entities. I would discuss these are emirates. This is entities which in the free zone. Free zone, at least whatever the tax heaven or the time that has been given by the free zone entities, the entities will not be subject to up to that period. But we need to wait for the regulation. Regulation will give us more clarity on this. Is there AD limit or entertainment expenses? There is a low limit on the entertainment expenses, but the limitation they have put in 50% of the entertainment expenses you can claim as an in as, as, as allowable expenses, otherwise, you cannot claim 50%. More than that, the limit is on the payment being made to the connected person and related parties. We have already discussed they cannot take anything from the business beyond the market value. Whether there is any tax on capital gone, there no tax on capital gain. Tax, well, what is the if capital company owns less than 95% of the subsidiary? Can still I include? No, you cannot do this. We said at least 95%, not only shareholding, 95% shareholding, 95% voting rights, and 95% entitlement in the profits and assets, along with this, all other conditions needs to be fulfilled as well. Then you can go for tax grouping, otherwise, you cannot go for tax grouping. Good evening, all adjacent. Thank you very much. Wonderful session. Please share a slide and record, and you can follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Appreciate it. Can I have the recorded session? You can find it there. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye bye.